Hello and welcome back to the Blender Absolute Beginner Tutorials. This is episode 8 and today we're going to start a new uh, model. We're going to make basically a stick figure of a person and we're going to learn some new tools for selecting and we're going to learn some new tools for uh, smoothing out surfaces a little bit. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to we're going to review a, a couple of things and we're going to learn a couple of new things about how to select multiple vertices at one time. So first thing we want to do is go to orthographic mode. So hit 5 on the numpad and then hit 3 to go to the right orthographic perfect view. Uh, we're going to zoom in a little, take off those um, axes with control space and then we're going to make sure that we go to edit mode with tab and turn the occlude geometry off. Now you can't tell in orthographic mode because the vertices behind it are exactly behind it. There's no perspective to show them. Here, I'll show you. So I'm going to switch over to perspective view and you'll see that you can actually see the line down and the the face behind this face is actually smaller than the face in front here. But if we go to orthographic, there is no perspective. So it's straight back and um, they're just right behind each other. So hit A to deselect, and we're going to go over a couple of select tools that will help us out. Um, you can use whichever you like to. The first one is called the border select. It's kind of like a square selection. So if you hit B, wherever your cursor is, it starts, well, you can see the, the lines kind of link up to your cursor. And then you can click and drag to select any area. So just click and drag and let go and it'll select and you can see that selected behind it as well it selected all four of those vertices and so hit A to deselect that was B for border select um, the next one is circle select which is C you hit C and anything within this circle will be selected just click and it'll select everything if you hold down um, what is it Oh, sorry, if you don't you don't have to hold down anything. You press the middle mouse button to deselect and then left click to select. You can also use a scroll wheel to change the size of that circle. So you can select and deselect multiple things at a time. And when you're done, just right click or I believe you can hit escape to get out of that. So I'll hit A to deselect everything again. And the final, the third and final is the lasso select. If you hold down control, left click and drag, it will let you select an area like that. If you hold down control shift, left click and drag, it will deselect. So control click and drag is select. Um, personally, I like the lasso select, which was the control click and drag, and I like the border select, which is the square. I'm sure the circle select, which is C, has its its good uses, but those other two are my favorite. So the first thing we're going to do, you'll notice I've been selecting these top vertices. That's what we're going to start with. We're going to extrude this out and that's why we're in orthographic mode so that all of this grid behind matches up perfectly. So we're going to extrude this out and make a stick person. And the first thing we're going to do is, so if you, if you remember, hit E and then we're going to lock it to the Z axis and we're going to hit 1. Actually 2, not 12. 2. Uh, because the cube you can see in this grid right now is two blender units tall. So we're going to go another two and hit enter. And we're just going to keep doing that um, until we get, let's see, we're going to go for, let me find the number five. We're going to go for five blocks tall. So extrude two each time. And then once we have five blocks, we're going to hit A to deselect. I'm going to border select these ones and we're going to extrude over to make the pelvis which is E and 2 enter E2 enter and then we're going to deselect border select extrude down so this will be negative 2 it didn't like that so it looks like just extrude 2 if you do negative 2 I think it goes based on the face you have selected so just go with what works. We're going to extrude down again, two every time. And it's kind of important that you do just one block every time because we're going to want these extra vertices later. So now that we have the pelvis and the legs, we're going to select 
these ones and extrude them up to let me dolly up a little bit shift and scroll wheel um, and we're just going to extrude this up I think this one goes five tall total so that's three four and five and then we'll take dolly up a little bit again uh, deselect border select and we're going to do some arms the arms will come out of this one Sorry, I messed that up. E2, okay. We're going to do the arms, four long each. And the other arm will be the same way. Sorry, I know this is probably pretty boring to watch, but I'm trying to do it quickly. So there we have our basic stick figure. And we're going to learn a lot from just making the stick figure, I promise. It's not going to be as, as plain as it looks. Next thing we need is a head. And we're not going to make it out of cubes. We're going to actually make a head with an icosphere that you can insert has a pre-made mesh but before you insert it you want to line up your 3d cursor so hit 7 on the numpad and remember this is the neck right here Wait, this one is the neck right here so try and get that 3d cursor right in the middle hit shift a to go to the add menu add an icosphere now it's down at his legs so go to hit 3 to line up the perfect view Grab Z, drag it up. Oh. Grab Z, drag it up to where it should be. And then scale. And we want to make this bigger as a head. And about that size looks good. Like I've said before, I'm no artist, but that looks good enough. The thing you want to make sure you did, which I forgot to mention before, is make sure you're in edit mode when you add. Otherwise, anything you add will be added as a different object. So, we have a really simple mesh that is a 3D representation of a stick figure. Very simple, very plain. We can spice it up a little bit by doing what are called modifiers. Um, but first, let's save this. So I'm going to go to File, Save, and I'm going to call this Person, and Save. Okay, so we're going to add what are called modifiers. If you are in Object Mode, and then you select him to make sure he has the orange highlight around him, come over to the Properties window on the right side, and find the Wrench. And this Wrench is called Object Modifiers. Modifiers are basically an algorithm, some kind of process which is applied to your current object. And there's a lot of different things that can do a lot of different effects. The one we're going to look at is called Subdivision Surface. So click Add Modifiers, go to Subdivision Surface, and you'll see automatically he smooths out. Um, it, it takes those corners and it smooths them out more. It subdivides the surface automatically based on some predetermined algorithm. Now. The menus you have here are different algorithms for that subdivision divide. The Catmull Clark is the default, and I think that works just fine. Um, subdivisions, you can change views and render are actually different. Um, view is what you see here in your 3D view window. That's how many subdivisions. So the more you click up, the smoother it gets. Um, I think two would be good for demonstration purposes. And render is when you actually render the scene, how many divisions it will do. Um, I like to set them the same because my system can handle it. The reason that they're separated is if you have a ton of meshes with a ton of subdivisions, sometimes they can eat into your memory. And so to save that, you'll want to render them high, but while you're working with them, maybe view them a little lower. So for two on a simple mesh like this, I think we're good to go. Don't worry about applying it yet. We haven't applied this to our mesh, but we can still see the effect. Um, before we go, the last thing I want to show you is you can see this model looks like it was cut or um, I don't know cut out of stone chiseled whittled something like that it has these facets on it like if you've ever seen a cut gemstone it looks like it has facets so one thing you can do to change that look is come over to the left side of the 3d view window the object tools and there's this option for shading uh, the default is flat and what that means is every surface is rendered like a facet. But if you come over and you hit smooth, 
you'll notice it smooths out those facets so that it looks like it doesn't have them anymore. It, it kind of blends them together and averages and interpolates so that it looks like a smooth surface. And that's really nice to essentially fake like you have a ton of uh, polygons in there that it's, that it's very smooth. Um, and it, it really is important depending on the type of material you want and the type of effect you want it to have. So I'm showing it off a little bit with changing my view around and I'll switch between it here. This is flat and you can notice again each polygon surface and each facet if you will and if you hit it smooth it'll interpolate between them and smooth it out. If you have a surface that is for example like the house we made in previous episodes you'll want that to be flat just because it's mainly made up of flat surfaces. If you actually go back and look at it and change it to smooth shading it will look kind of weird. It'll look really weird. It won't look natural and things will get a little crazy in it. But for something like this that we've already subdivided it a little bit, the more we subdivide it the better it'll look. If we go too smooth it'll really take and the effect is great. So that's all for this tutorial. Next time we'll pick up and detail this a little bit and I think I haven't I haven't gotten there yet but I think the next one is to give him feet to bend his arms a little bit and then eventually we're gonna make a hat and possibly a face for him and then after that we have some more materials and texture stuff coming up so stay tuned and as always thanks for watching